Number 1. Luis Alfredo Garavito, also known as The Beast. Colombian serial killer who was convicted of murdering 189 boys in the 1990s. Many of Garavito's victims lived in poor neighborhoods apart from their families, who could not afford to support them, leading observers to speculate that their disappearances were ignored or overlooked. Garavito had a long history of alcohol problems and psychiatric illness. In the 1990s Garavito went on a killing spree most of his victims were between the ages of 8 and 16, their bodies were brutally mutilated and showed signs of sexual assault. In 1997 the discovery of a graveyard containing the bodies of 36 boys near the city of Parira prompted investigators to start a nationwide manhunt. Garavito was finally arrested in 1999 on suspicion of sexually assaulting a young boy. During the interrogation, he eventually confessed to murdering 140 boys, and he was eventually given an 835-year prison sentence for the murder of 189 people. Garavito's victims were the unattended children of street vendors. Garavito lured the children by using disguises, most often posing as a priest gaining their trust. He then lured the boys with the promises of food, money, and gifts. Garavito traveled all around the world during his killing spree, committing murders in 11 of Colombia's 32 departments. Once in custody, the police were able to get a confession from Garavito. They suspected that he was the man that they were looking for but they needed more evidence to tie him to the crimes. A DNA sample from Garavito was taken. The DNA was matched to several crime scenes and victims. Luis Garavito received only 22 years in prison. His current scheduled release date is in 2021. Colombia has a law that states that an inmate can only serve 40 years in prison but since Luis Garavito confessed to the murder that was knocked down to 22 years. There are people who continue to fight to keep Garavito behind bars. Number 2 John Wayne Gacy John Wayne Gacy was an American serial killer and rapist who took the lives of over 33 young males in Cook County, Illinois. Gacy buried most of his victims under his house. He dumped some of his victims' bodies in the nearby Des Plaines River. Gacy was a member of the Jolly Joker Clown Club. He frequently performed in clown attire and makeup at children's parties and other events. When he killed, he would sometimes dress as his alter ego's Pogo the Clown or Patches the Clown. He lured his victims with the promise of work or gifts and then sexually assaulted, tortured, and eventually strangled most of them with his hands or with rope. By the 1970s, many young males accused Gacy of rape. He was then questioned by police about the disappearances of others. When Gacy committed most of his murders he referred to them as his cruising years. Then on December 11, 1978, 15-year-old Robert Pice went missing. It was reported to police that the boy was last seen by his mother at a drugstore where he worked before he headed out to meet Gacy to discuss a potential construction job. A police search of Gacy's house in Norwood Park, Illinois, uncovered evidence of his involvement in numerous crimes and murder. It was also discovered that Gacy had committed his first known killing in 1972, taking the life of 16-year-old Timothy McCoy after luring the teenage boy to his home. After a lengthy period of police surveillance and investigation, and the discovery of several trenches filled with human remains in the crawl space beneath his house, Gacy eventually confessed to killing about 30 people. When police uncovered human remains in Gacy's house in 1978, eight bodies could not be identified. Over the years, there have been many concerns that Gacy may have been responsible for the deaths of other people whose bodies have yet to be found. Recently Cook County authorities used DNA evidence to identify Gacy's unidentified victims. In 2017, one of those men, was identified as 16-year-old James Jimmy Byron Hawkinson. Gacy was ultimately found guilty of committing 33 murders, and he became known as one of the most ruthless serial killers in U.S. history.
he was sentenced to serve 12 death sentences and 21 natural life sentences. Number 3 Albert Fish In 1890, Fish arrived in New York City, at that point he became a prostitute and began raping young boys. In 1898 Fish worked as a house painter. There, he continued molesting children, mostly boys younger than age 6. In 1910 while Fish was working in Wilmington, Delaware, he met a 19-year-old man named Thomas Ken. He took Ken to where he was staying, and the two began a sexual relationship. He then took the young man to an old farmhouse, where he began to torture him. The torture took place over two weeks. Fish eventually tied Kedden up and cut off half of his penis. I shall never forget his scream, or the look he gave me, Fish later recalled. He originally intended to kill Kedden, cut up his body, and take it home, but he feared the hot weather would draw attention to him. Instead, Fish poured peroxide over the wound wrapped it in a Vaseline-covered handkerchief, left a $10 bill, kissed Kedden goodbye, and left. Fish began to indulge in self-harm. He would stick needles into his groin and abdomen. After his arrest, x-rays revealed that Fish had at least 29 needles lodged in his pelvic region. He also hit himself repeatedly with a nail-studded paddle and inserted wool doused with lighter fluid into his anal region and set it on fire. In 1928 kidnapped and murdered 10-year-old Grace Spitt on Long Island. In 1934, Fish mailed a letter to Grace's mother, describing the horrors of what her daughter went through. In the letter he wrote, It took me nine days to eat her entire body. She died a virgin. He has since been proven to have raped and strangled Francis X. McDonnell, age 8, and tortured and eaten Billy Gaffney, age 4. Police traced the letter back to Fish. When Fish was arrested he claimed that he was hearing messages from God ordering him to rape and mutilate children. Albert Fish's trial for the murder of Grace Budd began on March 11, 1935, in White Plains, New York. They found him to be sane and guilty the judge ordered a death sentence Fish arrived at the prison in March 1935 and was executed on January 16. 1936, in the electric chair at Sing Sing. He entered the chamber at 11.06 p.m. and was pronounced dead three minutes later.